Russia has a habit of boasting about its military capabilities. Before the war in Ukraine, many international observers were worried about Russia's new equipment, like the T-14 Armata tank, Su-57 Felon fighter, and even its infantry body armor like the Ratnik that was in service and the Sotnik that was supposedly in development. These systems made Western national security experts fear that Russia's military buildup under Putin would transform Moscow's military into a modern combined arms fighting machine, dragging it out of Soviet-era incompetence. Unfortunately for the Kremlin, the claims about the T-14, Su-57 and new body armors never materialized on the battlefield, and they were far from the only ones. Russia had also been boasting about a so-called doomsday submarine and a torpedo capable of creating a tsunami. But what are these, and is there any truth behind the claims? In this video, we'll take a look at Russia's doomsday sub, tsunami torpedo, and why these are likely also examples of false advertising. As of December 2023, Russia has 58 submarines in its naval fleet. Unfortunately, many of these submarines are aging, some of them are Soviet-era submarines well over 30 years old. To keep its submarine force modernized, post-Soviet Russia laid down the Belgorod-class nuclear submarine in July 1992. The Belgorod would be based on the Oscar II-class submarine. However, in a sign of things to come, the craft suffered for almost 30 years in developmental hell. The project originally began as a guided missile submarine, designed to threaten American carrier groups, and there were supposed to be multiple vessels in the class. The Belgorod and its sister vessels would use P-700 granite ship-killing missiles, of which they were supposed to be armed with 24. A Belgorod-class sub would shoot all of these missiles at the same time. The lead missile of the 24 would send targeting data back to the other 23 behind it, and if the missiles were intercepted, the next one would be able to take its place. A fleet of prototype Belgorod-class submarines would present a blizzard of missiles at enemy fleets. However, in 1997, the Russian Ministry of Defense halted the program amid the country's post-Soviet financial difficulties. The Russian MOD still intended to finish work on what would become the Belgorod, though, and kept training crew members with that goal in mind. The financial difficulties proved tougher than expected, though, and the nascent submarine spent years idling in the port of Severodvinsk. The sinking of the Belgorod's sister ship, the Kursk, put further stress on the project. As late as 2004, only the outer hull was finished. The keel-laying ceremony did not happen until 2012. At that time, the Belgorod's mission began to change. The submarine morphed from a ship killer into a special purpose platform as part of Russia's Naval Special Operations Unit. This change in designation previewed a change in the submarine's design. The Belgorod got bigger by 30 meters and was to become armed with a very different type of weapon. The submarine was finally launched in April 2019, after a series of supposedly satisfactory trials in June and July of 2021, the Belgorod was commissioned into the Russian Navy in July 2022. With a length of 184 meters and a width of 18.2 meters, it is the largest submarine in active service around the world. The vessel displaces 14,700 tons on the surface and 24,000 tons when underwater. It can dive to a depth of 520 meters and can remain beneath the waves for about four months thanks to being nuclear-powered. It has a top speed of about 32 knots, or roughly 37 miles per hour. The submarine comes with a crew of 110 sailors. Built by Sev Mash, which is a subsidiary of the Russian joint stock company United Shipbuilding, the Belgorod has multiple roles. According to the Russian MOD, it can conduct search and rescue operations, do research, and act as a strategic deterrent with its six 2M39 Poseidon torpedoes. The Poseidon torpedo, whose name was chosen based on a web contest held by the Russian Ministry of Defense and is also known by the NATO callsign Canyon, was first revealed in 2015. This reveal was supposedly not intentional, but rather came from a camera shot of a document in the hands of a Russian general that outlined the Belgorod submarine and the Poseidon torpedo. Tellingly, at the time it was revealed, Putin was making a speech decrying the United States and its plans to expand its missile defense capability. The CIA believes that the leak of this information was therefore intentional as a roundabout warning. Either way, the purpose of the Belgorod and its torpedo became clear in that moment. The United States has systems which can track essentially any missile launched on Earth. Even China's hypersonic missile tests in the summer of 2021 
which scared a lot of people in Washington, were detected by these radars. A Poseidon torpedo, on the other hand, would be much more difficult to detect if one were not actively looking for it. Without advanced warning, it would be hard for American defenses to counter. To further help it avoid detection, the Russians claim that the Poseidon is equipped with stealth technology that evades American underwater sound tracking systems that it deploys in the oceans. Although the Poseidon is ordinarily noisy, the noise is of the profile of civilian ships, making it harder for the United States Navy to distinguish the threat from all the routine commercial traffic in the world's waterways. Russian sources further suggest that the Poseidon torpedo can automatically slow down to a low speed of about 3 km per hour when it's closing in on its target, making it more difficult to detect and counter in the final moments. The Poseidon's developer is Russia's Rubin Design Bureau. Putin officially confirmed that the torpedo was under development in 2018 when he boasted that it could surpass American defenses. It is nuclear-powered and can travel at ranges exceeding 10,000 kilometers by remote control. The torpedo can even move autonomously and is enhanced by AI thanks to housing advanced guiding sensors and obstacle avoidance sonar systems. These navigation systems integrate with the GLONASS satellite array in space, which is Russia's equivalent to the American GPS network of satellites. If everything is as advertised, the Poseidon torpedo can roam around undetected for up to seven months thanks to its nuclear reactor. The nuclear fuel in the onboard reactor can last for 20 years, although the torpedo itself needs upkeep every seven months. Once the seven-month deployment period is over, Russian sources claim that the torpedo can make its way back to home port on its own. Once there, manned ships will recover it and its crews will do the appropriate maintenance on it to make it seaworthy again. Because of the nuclear reactors that power it, the Poseidon can reach speeds of 70 knots, 80 miles per hour on land, According to the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, the torpedo's speed might even reach as high as 100 knots or 185 miles per hour. This would make it faster than NATO's submarines and torpedoes. The torpedo has a length of 24 meters and a diameter of 1.6 meters. It can operate at a depth of over 1 kilometer. A single Poseidon torpedo can carry a 2 megaton nuclear warhead. This is a yield approximately twice as powerful as the most potent bomb currently in the United States nuclear arsenal, the B-83. Some early reports suggest that if need be, the Belgorod submarine can carry up to 100 megatons of nuclear warheads between its Poseidon torpedoes, a yield twice that of the 1961 Tsar bomber, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever detonated. If true, this would indeed make the Belgorod and its ammunition the terror of naval bases and coastal cities. In 2020, Christopher Ford, the Trump administration's Secretary of State for International Security and Non-Proliferation feared that the Poseidon torpedo could inundate U.S. coastal cities with radioactive tsunamis. An April 2022 Congressional Research Service report indicated that the Belgorod and its Poseidon torpedoes were intended as second-strike retaliatory weapons, rather than a first-strike option. The theory went that if Russian nuclear capability was significantly damaged in a first strike, the Belgorod and its Poseidon torpedoes would still be at sea, ready to go. However, the Poseidon's actual mechanics suggest a different purpose that we will get into before the end of the video. It's also worth noting that although the torpedo is most formidable as a nuclear deterrent, the Poseidon is also capable of hosting conventional warheads. Although its nuclear mission is the most formidable, the Belgorod can conduct a host of other undersea special operations and house the equipment needed to do so. In this capacity, the Russians claim that the Belgorod is also capable of hosting nuclear-powered midget submarines. These vessels are useful for surveillance missions or operations against critical underwater infrastructure, such as cutting pipelines or internet cables or wiretapping the latter to collect intelligence. The Belgorod can attach a single deep-diving Loscherich midget submarine underneath its hull. Also interesting for modern purposes, the Belgorod is supposed to be capable of acting as a drone mothership. With this purpose in mind, the vessel was redesigned in 2017 to replace the missile compartment with a longer container capable of storing underwater drones. The original 154-meter submarine therefore increased to its present length. In fact, the Poseidon torpedoes are considered drones. However, the Belgorod has also been thought capable of exceeding this purpose in its drone capacity. It can supposedly field autonomous underwater vehicles. These vehicles are the Harpsichord 2PPM model, which carry a plethora of sonars to scan the sea floor 
for the aforementioned infrastructure. The Harpsichord Autonomous Underwater Vehicle AUV, has a length of 6.5 meters, a diameter of 1 meter, and a range of about 27 nautical miles. Some estimates suggest that the Harpsichord can operate at a depth of 6,000 meters, but more modest reports say that 2,000 meters is the likeliest number. The Harpsichord has mostly been associated with under-ice missions in the Arctic, but it's also been known to operate with the Black Sea and Pacific fleets of the Russian Navy. It was first tested in 2016 and originally designed for deployment from surface vessels, but has been adapted to the Belgorod. The Harpsichord was, according to Russian sources, designed for a dual-use purpose. It could conduct reconnaissance for the Navy or even do scientific research, which is mostly a label for more clandestine underwater intelligence operations. The addition of the Harpsichord to the Belgorod gives it more eyes under the water, increasing its ability to gather intelligence at a low risk to itself and its crew. In a sign of its importance to the Russian hierarchy, the Belgorod and its crew does not report to the Russian Navy's commanders. Instead, they report directly to Putin, which is consistent with the vessel's special operations purpose. Although it was primarily designed to operate in the Pacific, in September 2022, the Belgorod was spotted in the Arctic. Military officials in Europe were warning that the submarine was traveling to the Kara Sea to conduct tests of the Poseidon torpedo, sparking fears, although there was no indication that the torpedoes would be detonating nuclear weapons. Two months later, however, American military sources reported to CNN that the Belgorod returned to port without carrying out the Poseidon tests. The sources believed that the Russians had encountered technical difficulties and the torpedoes failed to launch. With the waters of the Arctic freezing over for the winter in the immediate aftermath, the Belgorod and the Poseidon laid low. But what has the Belgorod been up to since the autumn of 2022? In January 2023, the Russian Navy took its first deliveries of the Poseidon nuclear torpedoes. That month, Russia also completed some pop-up tests of the Poseidon drone torpedo. These exercises tested the mass-dimensional model of the Belgorod's torpedoes, gauging their performance at different depths after firing. At the end of June 2023, the Belgorod was reported as sailing out of Severodvinsk in the Russian Arctic. Although this movement coincided with the Wagner Rebellion, it is thought to be unrelated. At the time, the Belgorod was supposedly attempting more sea trials of the Poseidon torpedo. The Kremlin went ahead with this mission without notifying the United States. This was unusual, because historically, the two Cold War superpowers would notify the other about strategic weapons tests to prevent misinterpretation or miscalculation. Russian sources later reported that the Poseidon's nuclear reactors worked according to their design and the torpedoes' operability and safety have been confirmed. These reports came by way of the Russian state news agency RIA Novosti on June 23rd. Sea tests of the Poseidon torpedo drone were supposedly scheduled for later in the summer. However, little evidence exists that the torpedo was actually tested at sea as of the end of 2023. Even if the Belgorod and all of its systems worked as advertised, there is a glaring problem, similar to those seen in the Su-57 Felon and T-14 Armata programs, a lack of numbers. Russia has only one Belgorod submarine in its fleet. Given its long period of development and international sanctions following the invasion of Ukraine, it's unlikely that Russia will be able to build any more of these submarines. With only one Belgorod in service, the submarine can be easily tracked by satellite surveillance. All it needs to do is surface and leave its port, and international observers will have a decent idea of what the Belgorod will be up to next. Russia has also been hesitant to deploy its supposedly latest and greatest equipment in battle, as seen by the absence of the T-14 Armata on the battlefields of Ukraine and the Su-57s not flying over the disputed airspace. The Belgorod has likewise played no part in the war. The Russian MOD will likely not want to risk this submarine, which took almost 30 years to develop, making it something of a white elephant to the Russian Navy. There are also many reasons to think that the Belgorod and Poseidon do not work as well as the Russians claim. First and foremost, there is physical and technical cause to question many of the Russians' claims regarding the Poseidon torpedo. For example, the supposed tsunami effect is certainly false. A yield of even 100 megatons would not be enough to create a tsunami if the detonation were to occur in waters close to shore. This is not to say that the Belgorod's offshore nuclear detonation would not be dangerous. The wave cresting into the port or coastal city would still contain enough radioactive material 
to make the area uninhabitable for about 100 years, according to James Mack, a former nuclear and electronics technician in the United States Navy. While this more than modest claim is of little comfort, there are many other reasons to be skeptical that the torpedo works as advertised. The Poseidon torpedo, despite being so large, is nevertheless likely not large enough to house a big enough nuclear reactor to keep it at sea for as long as its designers claim. Furthermore, the Poseidon's architecture would need to shield its advanced AI and navigational systems from the radiation produced by the nuclear reactor. Although a smartly designed structure could in theory provide this shielding, it would place limits on the torpedo that would make it less effective than the Russian MOD claims. The nuclear reactor on board the torpedo itself is also questionable. Existing nuclear reactors work by converting the energy from fission, the splitting of atoms, into heat. This heat energy then turns water into steam. The steam then moves the turbines, which produce electricity, and in the case of a nuclear submarine, propulsive force. The Poseidon torpedo, despite being as large as a school bus, is still too small to carry the equipment that would recreate this complicated process. Mack further states, There are ways around some of this, but those produce massive amounts of waste heat and leave a rather clear thermal trail for a number of satellites, not just military versions. So the Poseidon torpedo is up against the horns of a dilemma. It can increase in size to house the traditional nuclear reactor, which would make it impractical for a submarine launch torpedo, or it can use a mitigation process that would make it easily detectable and lose its stealth qualities. Russian engineers would need to be very good indeed and using exotic technology if the torpedo were to contain all the features that Moscow says it has. Previously, we noted that the Congressional Research Service classified the Poseidon as a second-strike nuclear weapon. Mack disagrees with this assessment. The Russian claims about the Poseidon would make it fast for a torpedo, but it's still far too slow to be a retaliatory weapon against a nuclear first strike. Instead, the Poseidon better fits the profile of a fundamentally first-strike weapon. According to Mack, in peaceful conditions, monitoring for devices like the Poseidon is more relaxed. They can only be effective if they can get in position before they are being hunted, and as that position requires that they reach the target harbor, being too far out would just dissipate the energy instead of building it as in a 2MT size, the energy needs to be focused more tightly to get a large enough wave effect and focus the radioactive contaminants into the target city. And once this Poseidon torpedo is at speeds of 100 plus knots, it will not be able to hide. Water density on the submerged object at those speeds requires significant propulsion and would have to be at a significant depth to avoid cavitation, yet in general coastal areas are shallow comparatively. So either this is actually a first strike weapon, or the intended purpose is not to target a coastal city. Mack's words seem to be proven in the actual conduct of the Russian Navy in its use of the Belgorod submarine and Poseidon torpedo. As of the end of 2023, there are still no reports of actual sea tests of the Poseidon. No evidence of this device patrolling the waters of the open ocean is currently available. Given Russia's long history of lying about its weapon systems, we would be downright foolish to take the claims of the Belgorod and Poseidon torpedo at face value. Basic physics should tell us that not everything is as the Kremlin claims. Additionally, the Belgorod has shown problems in its more modest mission of being a mothership to midget submarines and drones. For example, in July 2019, the Losharik submarine suffered a battery failure during trials off Russia's Arctic coast. Fourteen of the crew members on the submarine died in this accident, which Putin called a great loss. The accident poses questions about the Losharik's operability. Meanwhile, the Belgorod is not expected to be able to exercise its Losharik host capability until at least 2025. No test of the Losharik deployment from the Belgorod is yet reported as having taken place. Given the long history of delays in Russia's military programs, we might expect this timetable to lengthen. In sum, the Belgorod and its associated capabilities are much like Russia's other supposedly modern weapons programs. There are many boastful claims, but so far, there is little effective proof suggesting that the Kremlin is doing more than bluffing. But what do you think about the Belgorod submarine and its unique ammunition? What is the real purpose of the Poseidon torpedo and can it possibly work in a way that even resembles what Russia claims? Don't forget to let us know in the comments. Also make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more military analysis from Military Experts.